In this video, we're gonna talk about the key steps in planning and implementing a management system. Hi, I'm Andrew Thornhill. I'm the director at IRM Systems, where we assist organizations right through the process, right up to certification. Towards the end, I'll take you through our number one strategy for understanding the scope of work involved in implementing a management system. So step one is, if we jump into today's topic, is to really get a good understanding internally across the compliance team about the particular standard you want to implement and specifically what do those requirements require you to do. Probably time also too to start educating both your senior management team, the earlier they can start to understand what it's really about, and some of your operational team as well. So yeah, extending that knowledge of what the standard actually requires at different levels there. Step number two, we encourage our customers is to do a gap analysis. We'll show you how to use that tool later, but it's really similar to an internal audit. We get the requirements of the standard. It can really help us understand, well, Hang on, we don't have to reinvent the wheel for everything. We've already got some practices in place that will contribute to meeting those requirements. So number three, in, in, in actually implementing a management system, we really encourage all of our customers, number one is take a project approach. Treat this as a discrete project that will need approval from the senior management and endorsement from the senior management team. It'll need some resources. It'll need some allocated time away from people's operational duties to get this done as well. That is a bit of a key success factor. We sometimes see management not quite understanding the scope of work involved. They think it's writing up a few procedures. They just throw it on top of someone who's already busy and it just delays the whole project. It just doesn't happen because operational priorities will always take over. Next step is really start to understand our organizational culture and where by implementing our system where it might lead to some change and where we'll need to support that through some you know, communication and consultation activities, which I'll touch on in a moment as well. Step number six, as an organization, once we understand the requirements and the standard, is to start to understand our processes. How do we currently report accidents and incidents? How do we currently ensure traceability of our products and raw materials, for example? Start to understand both our, you know, our operational processes and our kind of management system level processes, improvement reporting, accident incident reporting. Understand how we plan and manage them and by working through and mapping out those processes, understanding where we need further support for those processes through training and competency development, or perhaps where do we need to define parts of those processes is a really key, critical step in developing a management system. The next broad step is, and this is something you can start straight away, is to formally start planning out and undertaking communication, consultation, training activities. So consultation is obviously that two-way process where we're working with operational staff and other internal stakeholders so they understand what we're doing and why and they have input into that as well, particularly how risks and hazards are managed in their work area, particularly in how operational processes in their work area are performed. It's critical to get that consultation early and consultation regularly. We can't just write some procedures and say, hey guys and girls, now follow this. You will get definitely get more resistance than if people have been consulted along the way. Our next tip is to get top management involvement and meeting at different stages and milestones through this project right from the start. We work with a lot of organisations who will say, no, we'll get management involved at the end and do a formal management review. No, no, we change that thinking, get them involved right from the start meet regularly, get them to review, you know, work with them to review progress on the project so they've got a really good understanding of what's involved. And number one tip for today too is to do a gap analysis audit. Now under the standards, all of those standards, you do have to do an internal audit of your management system against the requirements of the standard. Now I'm using the term gap analysis and it's essentially the same but it's a really good strategy as I said right at the start. How do we work out the scope of work, how much work is involved. Now we've got an example here. Uh, this clause is in, mo in most of the standards around determining competency. And what we, a gap analysis is simply where in the first column we've popped in, here's the requirements of the standard. Now why we really like a gap analysis approach is we can map out well what some of the internal processes and practices we already have in place to help determine competency when someone new comes on board or where we've got a high risk work, work task. Identify and map those things because that's going to form part of your system and then map out well hang on are there any gaps against what's required in the standard in relation to competency. Now the benefit of taking that approach is practices we already have in place we don't have to reinvent the wheel we save all of those issues around change management and 
resistance to change that we might get. And quite often we find we've got a lot more of a system in place. Yeah, we're already meeting a lot of those requirements more so than we originally thought. The way not to start, and I do see organisations do this, is they don't even look at what they do. 7.2 competence requires this. Let's write a brand new procedure. No, no, no. Put that thinking away for a while. What have you got in place? What's the gaps? The gaps then essentially form your scope of work and inform everyone involved, top management and the project team about exactly how long is that piece of string or how much work is actually involved. Out of that, develop an action plan, start to close those gaps and you're going to be very, very well prepared for your commencing your certification audits. Now that completed gap analysis that can form the scope of works for whether the project team are going to close out those actions or whether we get a consultant on board to help us uh, in that we can immediately you know, narrow down the scope for competency. We can advise the uh, consultant this is what we've already got in place. We'd just like to build on it and close those gaps. Now personally as a consultant assisting organisations I always say to them first step so we all know how much work's involved is this gap analysis. If you're enjoying our content it's time to subscribe. We really encourage that whole range of content to assist you on your journey to certification. Thanks for watching.